Hello and welcome to another episode of Drinking with Disney. Tonight's episode is episode number 14. And Holy, that's like two whole weeks. I know. <laughs> and we are taking down the Emperor's New Groove. The, taking it down! The animated classic from the year 2000. The it's Millennium. Cr- it's the Backstreet Boys crazy, Disney movie. Crazy that kids who were born... They who, started who saw. It. Kids who were born who saw this in th- or kids who were born on the same release date as this movie can now drink. Get out of fucked. here! Yeah, that's fucked. We have a guest in the background, so if I look over there, my best friend Britt is here, but she will not come and hang out with us because we're not cool enough. All right. Um, as always, we uh, play a drinking game along with the movie, and Molly will run down the rules for that, like she always does. So. Drink anytime someone says llama. The whole movie's about a llama, so guess how drunk I am. Pretty drunk. <laughs> Second rule is emperor. Drink anytime someone says emperor. The movie is called Emperor's New Group. Uh, anyway, okay. I have a problem with this rule. Anytime Cusco breaks the fourth wall. Yeah. For those who are not smart like me, we don't know what this means, but Lucas looked at me and was like, Oh, are you kidding? Everybody knows what that means. Yeah, so anytime Cusco talks to the audience is what that means. Oh my god, because obviously every single person that's ever lived knows what that means. Yeah, it's like a thing. Oh god. Um, and we always, of course, like Molly was saying, or sorry, like we were saying, play a drinking game along. And uh, this, oh sorry, there is a couple more rules. There's two more rules, I just needed to bitch about that. Yeah. You're getting ahead of yourself. Yeah. So anytime they use a potion in the movie, and anytime you see Bucky the squirrel. Right, right. There, that's it. There go. we go. All right. So uh, <laughs> Molly for this week was drinking the vodka soda, the Cottage Springs. Um, she's always going back and forth between the watermelon and peach like she normally does. And this week I was drinking the Shindig from Cowbell Brewing Company. Lydia got us on the Shindigs. Yeah, she did. They're our, so good. Our wedding photographer introduced me to them. And, they're and friends. A great beer. Yeah. And great friends. And great friend. Here's yeah. Penny! Yeah, and here's our hype girl. Hype girl Penny, Baxter, Whoa. you'll hear them fight in the background. It's not a domestic, it's our pet. Yeah. Um, also, we watched Peter Pan last time, and we came to the mutual decision that Tinkerbell is the only MVP in that movie. Yeah. She's not only real, she's the only... So, out of sympathy, I decided to do a shot with Lucas this week. These look like little shots, but these are candle holders that Britt got us from the kitchen. They're really big, so we just did baby one. Yeah. It's cinnamon peach. Yeah, it's a great flavor. Um, so this movie starts off with um, Emperor Cusco pretty much is. Oh no! First we see him as a llama. As a llama, and he's like, "Look at that rain. llama! Did you would you believe he used to be a human or an emperor?" And he's like trying to set you up with a sob story and make it think it was really sad right, that he like, was a llama. He tries to frame the whole thing that he's the victim in this situation. And right? the llama is also David Spade, yeah, which we love. Yeah, he, it's a better voice actor than an actor, right? Yeah, like, he's not you know. a great actor. He's great as a cartoon. He's yeah. great as a cartoon. Think Big about time. David Spade's voice, and then think about any cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> he could do it. Okay. Yeah. You never thought of that, did you? No, never did. I'm so smart. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, he's like trying to like say, oh, these people came in and ruined my life for no reason, and that's the beginning of the movie, and then yeah. it flashes to his life at the palace. Where he's just a complete douchebag. One, he's 18, or 18? We looked it up, he's supposed uh, yeah, to be Yeah, it was his 18. 18th birthday, yeah. yeah. Where are his parents? Again, this is a common thing in this movie, and I say it in pretty much every other episode, where the fuck are his parents? Yeah. Why is he just turning 18, but he's already the emperor? What happened to his parents? Where they must have been viciously murdered or just By died Shere or something. Khan? Who knows? Who knows? Every, They're in the Shere jungle, Khan, so maybe. I think murders everyone. He also keeps calling himself king of the world the whole movie. Yeah. But they're obviously in Peru because of all of the llamas. Right, yeah. But we looked it up. It actually yeah. is based in Peru. Like the Incas, yeah. So I don't understand. Do they just not know that there's the rest of the world? No, of course not. Okay. 
Yeah. So he keeps saying king of the world. But it's just yeah. Peru, buddy. Relax. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. Calm down. Peru, yeah. llamas. Llamas spit. You think you're king of the llamas? So we see his, I'm just like, kidding. Peru's really cool. We see his, like, intro song where he's, like, kind of going on about how he's, like, the best dude ever. And, and they uh, show him getting dressed in the morning. And it really reminded me of one of the real housewives of New York on vacation. Mm-hmm. That's, like, his outfit with his big earrings and his, like, crown that he's wearing. He kind of looks like Countess Luann, if you're familiar with Housewives of New York. Like, No, yeah, his, his whole outfit looks like a white woman on vacation in a tropical country trying to dress the part, you know? Cusco. Yeah. And and everything, buddy is just waiting on him hand and foot because he's the emperor. I mean, to yeah. be fair, when you're 18, if you have all of that money and all of that power and you literally think you're king of the world, yeah. then yes, um, you're going to act like that. No? Yeah. No, I'm sure. Like I acted like that when I was 18 and my parents don't have that much money. <laughs> <laughs> you were just a bitch, apparently? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> You yeah. knew me when I was 18. So then at Don't the, ask. At the, uh, the end of his, like, theme song, he bumps into this old man who's just, like, walking walking through the, the palace. And he's super pissed because this old man threw off his groove. Because he has a theme song guy. Yeah. And so because, because his groove was thrown off, he throws the old man just off of the side of the palace. Because that's an appropriate response to someone bumping into you. I mean, to be fair, I really don't like when people bump into me. No. I wouldn't throw them out of the window per se or have them thrown out the window, but you see I'll where have he's coming them from? escorted out. <laughs> or I wouldn't be happy yeah. when I saw them in the future. Yeah. No, I hear that. I hear that. I try to see both sides of the story. Sure, yeah. You need to see the pro tag and the antag right? at an Eve Lev. Sure, sure. Um, so after uh, after the opening song, then we see um, Cusco being led into this into his like throne chamber when he's supposed to like pick a new wife or pick a wife. Because eighteen, that's what you do. That's what you do in Disney if movies. If you when ask you're John Paul Jones, who's twenty four and has been looking for his wife for eighteen years, yeah, that's what he said. That's, that's a, what he said on Bachelor in Paradise. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm that's a Bachelor reference if you're not looking along, for you know. my wife for eighteen years. Derek. Yeah. I love John Paul Jones, but man, when he had that whole meltdown, I was not a fan. No. Not a fan. Not a fan. Anyway, but yeah, he goes in and he like picks apart these girls that are drawn like yeah. pretty characters. Yeah, they all look like if they had just had a different outfit on, they would be Disney princesses. Yeah. Right? Like, and, yeah. and then he's like, you must have a really good personality. And he says to the one girl, like, that's so mean. And yeah. this guy's a scrawny little douchebag with long hair. And like I said, dressed like, like a like housewife. Yeah. Land. Yeah. God. Jesus. So then, after uh, after that, we see uh, we see Pacha coming into the palace. Who is voiced by John Goodman? Who is also a great voice actor as well. Which I made a really good point of like Pacha's supposed to be this sweetie. Like he comes in and Cusco goes, "Now don't let his like humble nice guy act fool you." And like goes on about how he's like he's supposed to be all nice, but he's really a pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, but he's not. He's obviously really nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I said like. I feel like John Goodman sounds like more of a sweetheart than he looks in real life like a sweetheart. Like, think about Dan on Roseanne. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not a, Like, he's kind of sweet sometimes. Well, yeah. I guess the Connors now. So yeah, the Roseanne Connors. Yeah, more. Roseanne gone and done fucked up, and now it's just the yeah, Connors. Yeah, they killed her off. They killed yeah. her off. They said she yeah. had, like, an opioid overdose. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. I mean, maybe don't be a Trump supporter, and you won't get killed off of a show. Yeah. Anyway... Um, but it's just so funny, like, him as an actor, and then he comes in as a sweetheart, and I'm like, his voice makes so much sense as this big, sweet lug. Oh, yeah. But in real life, he's not so much like that. He's big. Yeah, you know, he's big, but he, he's, Pacho looks like a bigger softy he's than John sweetie. Goodman does. Yeah, yeah, just big want time. To pinch his little yeah. So big a- cheeks. after we, uh, after... Um, Pacha comes in, we kind of see why he's there, and that's because the Emperor summoned him to ask him about 
the mountain that his village is uh, is situated on because... He says, oh yeah, my family's been there for six generations. Yeah, and Cusco, the emperor, wants to destroy his village and make his summer home there. Like a resort. Yeah, and he wants to know what kind of, what side gets the better sunlight throughout the day because so, that's where he wants to put his pool. <laughs> what, you have sympathy for that? <laughs> no, but... Well, you want your pool to be in the sun. You want like, yeah. your pool the sun yeah it's but like, sneaking. like then when we when they're out in the in the jungle like throughout the whole movie there's like nothing around anything like there's a hundred fucking different places he can yeah, put he his really could thing, go anywhere right? he's really being a dick well, just because he knows that there's houses there so he can like build something there i think i don't know um but then anyway um they escort pacha off because obviously he gets pissed off and then he just has to give up and go home and whatever. And it cuts to um, Yzma. Mm-hmm. Or actually, no. Yzma yeah. is before we see Pacha get denied. We see Pacha coming in and then we see Yzma. Right, right, right. Back. Yeah, but anyway, whatever. so we see Yzma. For those of you who haven't seen this movie, I'm really not sure if Yzma is a human or a bug or some type of snake. But then they keep referring to her and say, what do they say? Scarier than... Okay, Lucas, Britt is not here to babysit the dog. What? No, I know. I threw the I threw the dog's toy and it went behind the couch. That's why I was asking her if she could grab it. Yeah, yeah she's, but she's a, a psycho. Pig. She's a too big dog. She's a psycho. Um, so anyway... Um... um they call they refer to her as scarier than all beings or something. It's scarier with scare more scary than within reason or something yeah, like that. Like yeah. So, and like they're like, yeah. Oh yeah, that's her. Yeah. That's so I bitch. think she's a human but I looked up, she's supposed to be like a hundred and something years old. Like yeah. she's an old lady but she's perfectly functioning and we go in and she's kind of like ordering people around. Yeah. And that's when like Cusco kinda comes up and he's like, Oh yeah, those damn peasants or whatever and it's like a backstory. Apparently, Yzma's like trying to run shit, which I kind of thought, why would you mind that much? That she's trying to run shit? Because what is her job? She's the she's the advisor. Think about Jafar yeah. in Aladdin. Yeah. He's the advisor. cusco has got to delegate his responsibilities out a little bit more, I think. He's just trying to micromanage the whole kingdom. And yeah. That's, so that's too much to bite off, I think. He goes in and he cuts off Yzma, and she's like, I was literally just trying to help. Not saying yeah. she's a good person, bug, snake, whatever she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, he's kind of a little harsh when he decides to let her go when she's, like, trying to run whatever he's doing in there yeah and apparently she's just worked there for years and also a funny thing is he's like oh there's Kronk like her newest whatever she yeah. always has these young boyfriends she's a cougar uh, who are these young like Kronk is Joe Swanson's voice from Family Guy yeah, I don't know is. what the guy's actual name is but like he's just supposed to be this big hunky guy and he's Yzma's new man yeah and yeah. oh, he's so funny! Oh, and he's hilarious. We don't know the dynamic between those two, really. Like, well, are, are they fucking? No, they're fucking. I feel like he'd break her in half. He's fucking her gently. Uh, yeah. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's gross. <laughs> I'm sorry, but next thing you're gonna say is that she's thirsty. Well, she's thirsty for Kronk. <laughs> she's thirsty for that young dick. Mm. Um. So then Yzma decides, okay, after she gets fired, um, she's like, okay, it's time to, uh, to fucking kill off Cusco here. But my whole thing with that is first, like, we see that they go down to this, like, place, wherever she lives. She, she obviously little... lives in the palace. Oh, she lives in the palace, She yeah. lives in the palace somewhere, so they're in, like, some dungeon that she lives in. Her secret and lab. And he has, like, no, 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 they don't go to the secret lab. They go from her, like, dungeon to the secret lab. Right, right. Her, she's her in quarters there. or whatever, yeah. She's in there, and she has all these cement heads of yeah. Cusco. who's making and those? And Kronk is just putting them up onto, like, a thing where you would, like, chop wood. And, and she's, she's smashing, smashing them. them. And I'm like, one... Where can I find someone to make all the heads of the people that I hate so I can smash them in cement? And two, who who made them for her? Yeah. 
Someone's like, that's a little cottage industry she's like propping up. Maybe. She's probably ordering a thousand of those a year. She's smashed like eight of them in one shot there. Maybe she has some sort of access to whoever makes like the palace statues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's just like, give me all of your reject copies. Oh, yeah, maybe. But like, you don't think that's raising up some flags? Like, what do you want all these Cusco heads for? Like, come on. Masturbation? Oh, Jesus. I don't know. She's into the young guys. (laughs) She is into the young guys. You never know with Yzma. Yeah, so then we we see that uh, she decides to try to kill Cusco, which should have been her game plan years ago by the sounds of it if she's that power hungry for running the whole fucking place. Yeah, maybe she killed Cusco's parents. Maybe. Maybe she killed Cusco's parents thinking there was just going to be this kid who wouldn't give a shit or whatever, and she would get free reign of the kingdom or the emperor or the empire. But then uh, young Cusco was like, no, 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 I'm down for this. That's, Maybe that's what happened. That's the only thing that makes sense to me right now. Yeah? All right. Yeah, because, like, what? Where are they? Um, but then she says, to the secret lab! But, yeah. like, where in the palace did you build this secret lab that nobody obviously. else knows about? It's a secret lab. It's underground. Okay, great. She pulls the lever and then she's like, Not that lever! And she like goes down and comes back up with a crocodile. She's like, Why do we even have that lever? Yeah. And smacks the crocodile off her butt because that's how you get a crocodile off you. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a little known fact. If a crocodile is attacking you, just give them a little love tap and they'll leave you alone. But they go down and she starts like thinking, Maybe I'll turn him into a flea and then I'll send him in a box and I'll send the box to myself and I'll smash the box. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, I'll just poison him. because She says, to save on postage, I'll just um, poison him. That's reasonable. Yeah, totally reasonable. She's a smart murderer. <laughs> yeah. My whole thing, too, is Kronk is very down for this murder. He's so down for the murder. Like, he doesn't question her at all. No. Like, he kind of suggested as, like, a, oh, if only we could get rid of Cusco. And she's like, that's right, we'll kill him. We'll get rid of him. And he's Just like... a bu- fucking doofus. He's eh? like, all right, like, down, as long as we can still keep having sex with your ancient vagina. Like, Jesus. that's really cool you with just, me. Yeah, shit. Um, so then they decide to poison him, and Kronk puts the wrong potion into the drinks. We don't know that yet. He puts the po- he, he puts, puts the potion into the drink, but he puts, puts the wrong he, he potion. He puts into the poison the into the one drink, yeah. and then his cream puffs start burning, yeah. and he freaks out, leaves, doesn't realize which one. He has to put it in. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Yes, yeah. He puts it in, and then he forgets. And then he like falls down like this, and they're like, "Okay, Grady's dead. We need to move the body." He sits back up and starts turning into a llama, and they're like, "What the fuck?" They the sticker pops up. And yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. they thought it was a skull and crossbone. But it's, but it's just a llama. llama. Yeah. Because when we were leading up to this point, I was like, their plan is to kill him? Like, their yeah. plan isn't to turn him into a llama? Yeah, like, I hadn't seen this movie in years like before that, we saw We lo- had to watch it, it before we watched it. Like, we watched it twice? Yeah. Yeah. We had to watch... It was the movie before the movie. Yeah. The shirt before the shirt. Yeah. We had to watch it already uh, before. Yeah, we watched it last week too. Yeah. To remind ourselves, but uh, yeah, I was really confused when it got to that point. They're like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. we're just gonna kill him." Then how the fuck does he turn into a llama? Yeah. It's because the thing was labeled wrong. Yeah, and then also like t- at the end of the movie when they're using all the potions like crazy, it seems like everybody is like, like kind of knows something is going wrong and something's happening to them when the potions are, like taking their effect. But when it happens to Cusco at the beginning, he doesn't feel himself being turned like into his, a llama at all. His neck all. extends like a llama. Yeah. And he has one hoof and one hand. How do you yeah. not realize that any of this is happening to you? Especially when your neck extends by like three feet. You're like looking at everything from this level and you got like a bird's eye view of it. Like some, oh, can some you pass shit is me going this? on. So yeah. they just knock him out and then Yzma yeah. sends um, Kronk to kill him. To go and kill and him. And Kronk's yeah. like, yeah, down. Yeah, super down for Give murder. Give me some of that OP. Okay. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. But he's like, yeah. He goes and he throws... He has him in a bag because he's knocked out and throws him into the water that's going to yeah. fall off the palace and yeah. da-da-da-da-da. But then he gets a guilty conscience and he goes and saves the bag. And the little devil and angel pop up on his shoulders. Yeah. I feel like what happens is very Disney. Yeah, it is a trope in Disney movies where, like, 
you fake kill someone, go tell your boss you actually killed them, but they come back in the end. They've Hercules, been alive the whole time. Lion King, Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, it's happened it's, a few this times. This is a yeah. pattern. It's a pattern. It's a good it's a good storyline. I'm yeah. not saying it's not entertaining. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But think of someone new. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then he um, ends up saving Cusco as he's about to fall over the, the waterfall. And then he ends up in the back of Patch's cart that he's bringing home with him. Yeah, because Patch's on his sad little journey back home. Yeah. He tells his wife that they need to like get out of their house or yeah. whatever. But at the same time, how do you not notice, like, however much a llama weighs extra I know. on your cart than when you got there? He's a huge guy. Maybe it's, uh, maybe he just doesn't, doesn't realize it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he just thinks he's tired, you know? But anyway, so Kronk sees him goes, go away and he, Jesus Christ. And he's like, okay. So then he goes back to, Pacha goes back to his house and tells his wife that he was never able to see the emperor. He doesn't yeah. want to tell her that they have to move out of their house. His wife his wife is pregnant and they have two kids, two young kids. And she looks like this tiny little woman. He like, would destroy her. Uh, like, she's definitely on top when they have sex. But they're definitely fucking, though. Like, they yeah, have a couple like kids. Yeah, like, they've got like, two tiny little kids, like, one in a diaper, one who's probably three, yeah. and then one on the way. Yeah. Like, they're banging. That's not it. They're pr- pumping out more, I bet, But too. she is definitely on top. Because she's tiny. Yeah, big she's time. She's tiny, and she's big so time. chill. I like Pacha's wife. Yeah. no, she's What's her name? Yeah, I don't know. Pacha's wife. Pacha's wife, yeah. I'll look it up. And then Cusco um, wakes up from being unconscious and realizes that, um, you know, he's out there. Yeah, he thinks that Pacha has, like, kidnapped him because that's yeah. the only thing he can remember. Yeah, he that's the last, the last person he remembers is talking to Pacha about He can't remember his, his dinner with Yzma and... Kronk. Kronk. Yeah. Yeah. And then he says, and then he, Pacha starts screaming, Demon Llama! And he's yeah. like, Demon Llama, where? Like, yeah, he doesn't so realize. He doesn't that realize he's a that he's been transformed, it, transformed into a llama. Like, what a yeah. dumbass. How do you really not feel, like, itchy? Yeah, you think you With all that itchy. fur? Yeah. Or, like, yeah, your hooves feel weird? Or, like, you can't. Because. But are you... You can't move your fingers, like, because they're hooves now, right? But are you yeah. constantly aware that you're a human? No, I guess not. Yeah. Yeah. I guess not. Good point. Yeah, right? Smash that. Smash that theory that yeah. I brought up But myself. also, it, later in the movie, we do see that he knows that Yzma has this, like, secret lab or whatever. So why wouldn't his first thought be, oh shit, Yzma did this to me, not this like fucking random village person yeah, who he goes, has nothing. Like When he's like talking to Pacha about being a llama, he says like, oh, Yzma has this lab, so I'll just go back to the palace and get her to change me back. Yeah. And that's why he starts to go back is to find her. Right, yeah. Little does he know. That she's the one who fucking did she's it. She's a yeah. mada, a I muck duck, Yeah. A murderer. <laughs> So then Cusco is like, all right, fuck this guy. I'm just going to head back to the palace. Well, he tries to order him to take him back. But uh, Apache is having none of that shit. He's like, no. And then he says, well, you can't tear down my house. Yeah. And Cusco's like. Tries to leverage that against him. And then Cusco's like, ha ha, whatever. He's like, I'll be fine in the jungle. I said forest. And then Lucas laughed at me because it's a jungle in Peru. (laughs) Like, okay, forest, jungle, tomato, tomato. Right? No. No. <laughs> Brit's no. shaking her head. Not no. even a little bit. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Potato tomato. Potato tomato. <laughs> Different things. Yeah. There. That's what I said. Exactly. Yeah. So then Cusco ends up fucking in a jaguar pit and uh, running for his life. And uh, Patches saves him big time by swinging in like Tarzan and uh, saving his little llama life. Little llama life. L L L. L L L. LL Cool Cusco. Yeah. But then they end up going down a waterfall or in, yeah. like tied to a log heading down the river towards a waterfall. And they go over and uh, fucking Cusco literally like dies for a little minute there. Yeah, and then Pacha tries to give him CBR and he wakes up and freaks out that yeah. Pacha's trying to kiss him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, he's obviously not trying to kiss you. He's not into llama. He's not into llama, llama love, yeah. And then he starts, like, gargling something to rinse out his mouth. What are you gargling? The, like, 
lake water that you were I just know, in? I like, know, I know, it's so fucked. Ugh, yeah. why are you gargling that? Do you have Listerine? <laughs> so what is the point of yeah. that? It's worse than the spit that would have been in your mouth. Oh, big time, big time. So many more bacteria and little, like, parasites and shit. Like, that's fucking nasty. But after that uh, near-death experience for Cusco, we see um, Yzma holding the funeral for Cusco back at the palace. Okay. Yeah, she's holding it, and she's like, now I'm in power. One, doesn't seem like anybody cares or knows why no. Cusco died. Yeah, this there's 18-year-old no... guy, what happened? Why did he die? And why is it okay that this old woman is now all of a sudden taking over? Yeah, she doesn't offer like an explanation for his death. And he doesn't have, Cusco doesn't have cousins or siblings or anything or... Well, no, I don't think he has any siblings, but no. like cousins, anything, any kind of bloodline yeah. other than this woman who's a thousand years old. Yeah. So automatically she's taking over and then she finds out that he's not actually dead. Yeah. yeah. After the funeral, Kronk is kind of like, yeah, what if he's not dead? Yeah, like, kind of, yeah, yeah. And like, lets the beans spill that he didn't actually kill him. Yeah. So, they go back, and the same night is after they've fallen on the waterfall. In the morning, we find out Kusko's kind of trying to start to be a good guy. We see that he's starting to come around. He he says to um to Pacha that um he'll move his Who palace. Who is Pacha? <laughs> he'll move his palace um if he gets him back to the to the castle, but um. Like, he shakes his hand, but um, then turns to, like, the camera and, and speaks to the audience saying, like, oh, no, this isn't really going to happen or whatever. He says, what a sucker or something like that, something along those lines. Or I don't even know if he does that or we just get the feeling or we know. Or no, I don't he think says, he says like, anything. He, he does say something, like, sly, like, under his breath, kind of. Yeah. I forget the exact wordage that he uses, but... And um, then they get to this fucking super, super sketchy bridge. They're walking across. Patcha falls through. And Cusco's just going to leave Cusco's him Cusco's ready to leave him. He makes it all the way to the other side and of the he, bridge. And he's like, we shook on it. And Cusco goes, I have hooves. Yeah, we come, didn't shake hands. Comes back to, Which, like, to say that bullshit in his face. Fair enough. Yeah, if I we're getting hooves. technical about it. Yeah. Idiot. Yeah. I always like to have the bad guys back. And then, uh, and then he heads back across the bridge and then falls through as well. And then they have a big argument and then end up like in like a fist fight. Um, swinging from vines. Swinging from the vines, yeah. From, from the bridge. From the bridge. And, and then, then all of that die. breaks and they fall yeah. and they fall towards this pit of alligators. Yeah, and they're about to die, but then they... Wait, uh, alligators, crocodiles. Whichever. Crocodiles are in water. Alligators are in land. I think they both swim pretty well. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Something, anyway. something reptilian. Yeah, they're in some kind of, in, right above some kind of cold-blooded prehistoric monster. Good one. Yeah. And um, basically a dinosaur. Yeah, and uh, then they end up making it like using each other's weight to like walk up a little cliffside, and then they get back, but they're on the wrong side of the bridge, so it's going to be a four-day journey to get around it. Which okay. doesn't really make much sense. Doesn't really make make much sense. And then the next scene, we see Yzma and uh, Kronk looking in the forest. The jungle. Forest jungle. Potato, tomato. Right. Anyway, we see them looking. First off, Yzma's wearing heels. Like a fucking... Yeah. She's a real housewife. She is... Okay, and I can't say this. Because I actually love the person I'm about to say, but she's Lisa Vanderpump. She is kind of. She yeah. is Lisa Vanderpump. She's like the yeah. oldest housewife, <laughs> and she's kind of like I'm gonna wear heels anywhere. Yeah. Like I have, like whatever. She's Lisa Vanderpump. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but I love Lisa. S sorry to go back, but um, during that like bridge rescue scene where they get themselves out of like that crocodile alligator situation that is the first like nice thing you have like legitimate nice thing that you see Cusco do because he yeah. does save um Pacha's life because when we see them shake on things we think it's a nice thing but it's not but it's not yeah um and uh and then we see the, the um the little squirrel again given fucking uh Kronk and Yzma the situation 
Yeah, but, so they find the squirrel that... Oh, we didn't really mention the squirrel earlier, but this squirrel sees Cusco and Pacha trying yeah. to escape the panthers, jaguars, whatever they are. Yeah. And so he's trying to explain that. And apparently Kronk can speak Kronk squirrel. Speak squirrel, yeah. Squeak, squeaker, squeak, squeakin', squeak, squeaker. Squeak, Fuck. squeakity. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he's talking to him. But when he's talking to the squirrel, he is speaking in English. Yeah. Like the no, squirrel yeah. says something to him and he says something back in English. And then Yzma tries to talk to the squirrel. And he's like, oh, no, he doesn't understand you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. Um, so then they... Uh, Follow where the squirrel told them to, and it cuts to Pacha and um, Cusco. Cusco in this diner. And Cusco has to dress up because there's He's a sign. Dressed up like a lady. This, there's a sign that says no llamas. I have a question. Where did they get the fake eyelashes to put on Cusco? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Did they pluck them from an animal? Pacha's how did resourceful. They, how do they glue yeah. them on? Where's yeah. the lipstick from? Yeah, he's resourceful. Anyway, they're in this diner, and Cusco says he's going to go and talk to the chef about, like, the menu. Because he thinks all the food is nasty, right? And that's when Yzma and Kronk come in. Yeah. And he's talking about the menu, and then when Yzma and Kronk sit down, they start talking about how they tried to murder Cusco, and now they're out looking for him, and Pacha's sitting at the next table over. Yep. Kronk turns around and tries to get something from Pacha, and he's like, how do I know you? From high school wrestling? From this? From that? And Pacha gets up and fucking darts to the kitchen, because that's where Cusco is. Yeah. And pushes him into the pantry, kitchen, cupboard, whatever they're in. And then Kronk comes into the kitchen and starts to complain to the chef, too, because Yzma, they're all used to eating, like, royal food. Right, They're yeah. not used to eating, like, the slugs or whatever they're serving. Yeah. So the food for commoners. Yeah. So when Kronk goes in, he still thinks it's Cusco complaining or it's another complaint, and he says he quits. So Kronk starts to serve. Yeah. He starts to cook the food. Oh yeah. Um, and he just goes along with it, and then he's like taking all these requests from Isma and Cusco, and it's funny because he says something. Yzma says, like, oh, I want, like, this as my side. And he's like, okay. As my side, yeah. Okay, but you're going to have to pay full price. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. very into it yeah. for oh, the yeah. time that he's in the kitchen. He wants, like, a career as a chef. That's all he wants. That's all he wants. He just yeah. wants a simple life. He doesn't want to be banging this old lady anymore. Yeah. But he's also, like, into murder. I don't know about <laughs> Kronk. I really don't. You kind of. You kind of up and down on him. Yeah. yeah. I kind of like Kronk. I kind of don't. Yeah. Kind of iffy about him. Kind of oh, like, eh. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's hilarious, but, like, he... I feel like anybody that that guy voices is funny. Yeah. It's like, almost with Kronk, it's like, you, you, you can't really have an opinion on him one way or another because he he doesn't know what his intentions are. Like, he's just, like, so stupid, he's just being led around. To he's like, along for the ride. He's just along for the ride, right? Yeah, that's yeah. valid. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then Cusco and Yzma both go down back to the table. Mm-hmm. And um, Pacha's trying to go out there, and he realizes he kind of sees that Yzma's kind of looking at Cusco and is kind of starting to realize who he is or right. thinks she knows who he is. So he tells the waitress that it's her birthday to get them out of there. And when he finally tells Cusco that um, he, like, they're out to kill him, yeah, he's like, no way. And that's but when he Cusco rubs off his believe. eyelashes. Yeah. And that's when I had the thought, where did he get these eyelashes? <laughs> I'm still really concerned about that. Yeah. Are they extensions? Because if they are, you shouldn't be able to rub them off like that. <laughs> so then after um, this like confrontation between um, Pacha and Cusco about if Yzma and Kronk are there to help or, or kill him, that's when they go their separate ways. The rain kicks off and that's when we're sort of back to like the beginning beginning portion of the movie well i just had a bit of a spill it was um, penny yeah just put the blanket over it it's fine it was penny pen come on um but then we see um Kronk sleeping and he's having these dreams about how he knows Pacha and Cusco or whatever like he's like sleeping and then he wakes up he wakes up and he says that guy he's like that guy didn't pay for his food Penny, you're gonna get and then drunk. he goes back to his sleep and then he wakes up two seconds later and he's like 
the guy from the thing. And he realizes that's mm -hmm. the guy that I jumped this body off on. Yeah. And you're like, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> that's that moment. Yeah. And then <sighs> after Cusco wakes up out of the rain, he like goes to this field where all these llama are grazing, figuring, oh, maybe I'll like be maybe with I'll these guys. Maybe I'll just live life yeah. as a llama. You know what? That's like when I was a little bit fat. I was like, maybe I'll just live life as a fat person. Yeah. And then, uh, and then Pacha, <laughs> don't, don't know if Pacha is like following him or whatever, or if he's just he there just, for like, another reason. He just thinks to go. He just thinks to go there. Because he's sweet and he yeah. knows he's going to go there. And uh, and he's just there talking to the llama about Cusco and uh, then sees him and he's like, oh, there's my buddy. Yeah. And then they, uh, they try to go back to the palace. They continue okay. their mission. No, they go back to Pacha's place first. Right. Which, okay. This is a really big problem we have. <laughs> so they say that there's a trip they're taking. It's four days to get back to the palace. Yeah, after the bridge goes out, they say it's going to be four days. So I thought about it, though. I don't think they made it very far into their four-day journey. I think it was the same day that we got flashed to that diner. Yeah. Because it's a four-day journey or whatever, and they run into Yzma and Kronk, and then all of a sudden they're back at Potch's place. How the fuck did they get there so fast if it's a four-day fucking journey? I don't think it's a fucking four-day journey there, bud. No, probably not. <laughs> four-day journey, bud. Yeah, it seems like it's like the whole thing's a whole day. Yeah, I think right? they're one day into their four-day journey and running right, to right, these right. rat scallions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then when they get back to um, Patch's village, Yzma and Kronk are there in Patch's hut, faking that they're uh, family members of Patcha. And uh, when they first get to the village, there's these two uh, older men playing chess, and they say to Patcha, "Oh yeah, your family is up with um, up with your, your wife." Your other family. Yeah, yeah. Like your your family's with your family. It's familyception. Yeah, it's fam. It's famception. Um, but there's um, some, like, you know, relatives of yours up with your family is what they say. And then, and then it, they say, like, scarier than all being. Yeah, scarier, scarier within, scarier than within reason, yeah. And they know it's Yzma, because yeah, that's how yeah. you describe that bitch. But then we see Patch's wife again being dope as shit, kind of leading them on a wild goose chase about, you know, where they were, where they've been. And she doesn't say anything about, like, talking llamas or all any of this kind of nonsense. She's kind of... Playing, playing it all cool. Yeah, she's playing it cool. Well, she doesn't know. She doesn't know where he is. She just no. thinks he's back talking to the emperor. Mm -hmm. um, and then she just sees him at the window, and wa he waves her over, and she, like, plays it real cool yeah. and doesn't, like, let off that she has seen something out the window. She's just like, I'll be right back. Like, I have to go do something. Yeah, yeah. That is dope. If it was me, if it was Kate, if you were in a situation like that, Let's just hope that if anyone is in a situation like that, it's me and that you're sitting talking to someone because I'd be like, oh, hey, babe, like so annoying because <laughs> like I can't play it cool. I'd be like, oh, you what do you want? No, you can't play anything cool. No, I'm really cool, but not that cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then it, after that, it's kind of like a mad dash back to the palace to get into uh, Yzma's lab to get the potions first. But they don't even really have to ask. Like They kind of just convince that... Um, that. They kind of just convince um, the wife to keep Yzma and Kronk there and distract yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Lock her in a closet, do all this shit. Basically things you would get arrested for. Big time, big time. There's no police... Mm -hmm. When there's no king of the world. <laughs> Let's be real. Yeah, so um, then we see them, like, going on the map and uh, uh, fucking Pacha and uh, Cusco have, like, uh, like, a big, big lead. But then somehow fucking Yzma and Kronk beat them there, which they even call out in the movie. Kronk's like, yeah, I don't know how that happens. They hold yeah. up a map and they're like, it literally doesn't make literally sense. Literally doesn't make any sense, yeah, which is hilarious. Yeah, because they go back to get the human potion. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, my question is, why are the only potion that Isma has to turn things into animals? You think if you had that many potions to turn things into animals, you'd have like a hundred potions to turn 
animals back into humans like if that's your primary why source you of like have... torturing people like you'd want to have the remedy on deck why right? you only have one human potion that seems unreasonable yeah i think she's just kind of fucked up though and she just wants everyone to be fucking animals probably yeah. i don't know because that's the only thing that makes sense but yeah. also why do you only have animal potions why can't you have potions to make people fall in love is she a witch is she a scientist is she a sorcerer She's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, She's just a bitch. Then we also see a bunch of guards come in too, right? And like, where were these fucking guards when um, when Kuzco was emperor, right? Like, if he had two guards in his like little in like the 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 dining hall or wherever like they were eating dinner if he had one guard in there they'd be like oh shit where were they eating dinner because they invite him to dinner and in what world would you go to dinner with someone you just fired yeah because they're definitely gonna try to poison you right what in what world would you be like you know what this is a really good idea this could all be avoided if Cusco didn't go to that dinner which in real life he would have not imagine if megan fired me on really bad terms and i was like let's go to dinner yeah she'd be like i'm busy (laughs) yeah <laughs> like you're gonna try to fucking kill me. Yeah. She would be like, I am very busy right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just not realistic. No, it's I mean not. it's a Disney movie. Yeah, of course. But at the same time, why are you going to dinner? And why do you have no suspicion? How come you say, Oh, I need to go back to this secret lab that she has with all the animal potions, no other potions? How do you not know that she's the one who turned you into an animal? Yeah, he why knows you- about the secret lab. And he knows about all the potions, presumably, because he knows about the secret lab. And all the guards turn into different... They spill all the potions. Yeah. So then all the guards turn into different animals. And the one guard's like, I was turned into a cow. Can I go home? (laughs) And she's like, yes, everybody else stays. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Then Yzma gets turned into a kitten. Mm. And um, they have one human potion. They have this struggle between the kitten and the llama. Yeah. With Kronk and um, Pacha helping out. How does she have two llama potions and one human potion? Because Cusco oh, yeah. gets turned into a whale. He gets turned into a mouse. He gets and turned then, into a turtle. And then he gets turned back into and a llama. And then he gets turned back into a llama. And he's like, yay, I'm a llama again. Llama must be her most popular potion. <laughs> she just won- Well, she's in Peru. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's how all the llamas got to Peru. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> From Isma. Yeah, it must be. This must be an old legend. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they struggle big time for that uh, human potion. And then uh, Cusco ends up grabbing it, drinking it. But not before he saves um, Patch's life. Big time. Patch and is about he's to die about to and he sacrifice the potion for Patch. Yeah, he does sacrifice the potion for, for He's Pacha. like, fuck it, I'll be a llama as long yeah. as this guy lives. And then they, the reason they get the potion back is because it's falling. Yzma, as the kitten is falling, she, she falls catches... falls on a trampoline and then comes back yeah, up. Yeah, she falls on a trampoline, comes back up, catches the potion, and that's how they're able to get a second shot at the potion for Cusco. But then she catches it again, and then all of a sudden... Okay, because Kronk got sent down some trap door... Yeah. When, and uh, he opens some, like, porthole and smashes the kitten. Yeah. And then the potion gets dropped and they get it back. Yeah. Long story short, obviously, Cusco gets turned back into a human with the one human potion and the two llama potions. Yeah. Yeah, <gasps> and then after that, um, he doesn't even, like, you know, banish Yzma or kill her or anything. Like, she's just still a kitten for the rest of her life. You know what? Kittens are pretty cute, but I feel like she would be an asshole kitten that would pee on everything. attack your face whenever she had the opportunity. You'd have to get rid of that. Yeah, yeah, and declaw that bitch. Yeah, Yeah, she's definitely, she has to be declawed. There's no way she has claws around that palace. Yeah. So then it just cuts... To, like the end song the it's, end, there's no songs in this movie we don't have a best song worst song whatever um it's tom jones tom singing. jones does like the intro and outro songs yeah. yeah um but it cuts to like oh Cusco says he can't build the resort anymore there's a hill that doesn't have a village there and he's just like has this cottage so he just has a little hut like yeah up like by Pacha where has. Pacha is so they're neighbors so they're neighbors they have a good time and yeah. then the end scene 
is Kronk just giving squirrel squirrel yeah, language yeah, classes? He's, he's like a squeak, um, squeak, squeak, squeaker. Like what do they call him here? Like um, a girl guide. Like a girl guide or beavers. Beavers. Beavers or like a boy scout kind of thing. Brownie. Brownie. Yeah, yeah. So he's like leading one of those classes, teaching them all how to squeak, speak squirrel, and Yzma is there trying to learn it to and as a cat did. and yeah. it's just a cute movie yeah overall very cute movie really funny movie really too. funny really like david spade like i said as a cartoon yeah really holds up too like we watched it like i said last week and this week and last week when we watched it we were both like laughing through the whole thing like we it was really really funny notes. really really funny um and so that's kind of our rundown of the movie um, and as always, we do like to hit on a couple categories and sort of awards that we do. Um, and the first one we like to touch on is the real MVP. I think, you know, you go first. I think the real MVP is Pacha. Like, he's he's the one who saves Cusco multiple times, is always there for him, gets him back to the castle, and they end up being bros after. If you're going for the obvious toys, yeah, sure. Yeah, and who do you think it if is? If you want to be a hipster like me, yeah, it is Kronk, because Kronk um, is like back and forth the whole movie. But at the very end, the only reason they get the human potion back is because of Kronk. It's an accident, but it's still Kronk that does it. Yeah, no, I hear that, but um, Kronk is just like. Kronk's just like a weapon. Like, whatever po- direction you point him, he'll, like, do whatever you want, you know? like That's he why he's no, the real MVP. He has no moral compass or anything. He's just kind of, like, there, like, he'll following anyone. He'll do what you want. Exactly. He's the real yeah. MVP for that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, we always also say, like, we normally like to hit on the best song, because most Disney movies, especially the animated ones, are musicals. Uh, but this one really just has a couple, couple like, he has the theme song at the beginning Who's inside that? of the the exit song at the end there's no real musical numbers so we don't really have an award for that but the other thing we like to hit is uh, what we want to see more of and less of and uh, we want to see more of Cusco's upbringing yeah like were his parents Cusco's upbringing and more of Yzma trying to like take power from him a little bit because we only see like like, we need a little more backstory we only see one like 30 second bit where she's trying to like manage people right (laughs) Um, and what we want to see less of is Cusco kind of being a douchebag like we understand that he's not a good dude like that's very much established we get it yeah like we fully understand like he pulls douche after douche after douche yeah like that's totally his mo douchism mo yeah um so my thing is marry fuck kill I tried not to include Cusco. Right. There's not that many characters in this movie. No, it's a tight cast. There's only like really four characters. Right? So, Mary Fuck Kill, Yzma Kronk, Pacha. Thank you, Mary Pacha for sure. Kill- Why? Because he's a sweetie. And he's a good dad. You're a sweetie. And he cares about people. You care. You're Pacha. <laughs> well, I think you definitely kill Yzma because she's like the root of all evil. And you fuck Kronk. But there is there is a case to be made for marrying Kronk because he's just like, He'll do like you'd be you like want. the complete alpha in the relationship, right? You know like, what? You're right. I would marry Kronk, fuck Pacha, kill Yzma. Oh, you like bossing people around? Yeah, Never obviously. Heard news to me. Just kidding. <laughs> he's just kidding. It's not news to him. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. You're married to me now, sucker. Yep, yep. No getting away from you now, is there? Mm -mm. Anyway. Not that I would even want to. Come on. Stop it, Pacha. Okay. Love you. Love you, Pacha. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Anyway, so that's sort of our, uh, that's our recap and rundown of Emperor's New Groove. Uh, Thanks for listening and tuning into this week's episode. As always, follow us on social media. Twitter is at drinking... W Disney. Uh, Instagram is at drinking with Disney underscore. 
And um, you can find us on any place that you download your podcast. Make sure to uh, rate and subscribe. A lot of people listen to us on Spotify. Yeah, hit that Spotify up. Make sure to give us five stars, five stars, five stars. That's 15 stars. That's 15 stars. Give us all them stars. And we will be back in another couple weeks with another uh, Disney classic. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye.